What is going on guys? Welcome back for week six of the NPL Majors. This week we are taking on somebody that's uh, been long overdue to be an opponent of ours, uh, Danza and his Los Angeles Neo Kings. If you guys don't know Danza, he's been around since the beginning of Draft League format. He's also been a very uh, regular participant in the NPL, and I've never gotten a chance to play this guy, and uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You guys can see his team over there on the right. I actually should adjust the dimensions. That's a little bit off. Gonna shift, and there we go. Um, anyway, we got a uh, Landorus Eye that is, of course, Sheer Force. Uh, we have Tornadus Therian, which is one of his Zemons, got Victini, Cobalion, Sylveon, Cobalion, Sylveon, uh, Rotomo, Mamoswine, Mega Gyarados, Kangaskhan, Dusnoir, Ariados. So, uh, I've noticed a few things about his team. Uh, he's got a couple of major ice weaknesses up at the top. Uh, with Lando I and Torn T. Those are uh, very, very big ice weaknesses for him. Uh, then he's also got the Victini, which is a massive powerhouse against our team. If you look at our team, there's nothing on the roster that really wants to take V-Creates outside of Mega Arrow. And if he clicks Bolt Strike on a turn that I go into Mega Arrow, that's always bad. So I'm looking for Band and, and Scarf sets, obviously. Uh, Cobalion is actually a very big issue uh, to me. He can run a myriad of lead sets against me, which beat the, uh, the majority of my leads. Uh, things like Fortress, Diggersby, Mega Arrow. Like, if he runs an Air Balloon or a Shookaberry on his uh, Cobalion, he can beat my Arrow and my Diggersby very readily. Uh, so, more so a uh, an Air Balloon, because I would have to pop it first. So... That's something I'm going to have to watch out for, definitely Cobalion. Sylveon, uh, another uh, big, big threat to me. i got to watch out for that thing. I can't carry uh, Hyper Voice because of Como, so I do have the advantage of being able to calc for Moonblast, even from Specs. So that's always nice. Um, and then uh, another uh, another huge, two more massive threats on his team, Mamoswine and Mega Gyarados. Mamoswine kind of just spams moves against me. Ice plus ground is so, so effective against my team. Uh, Fortress being the only real thing that can take a hit and fire back and kill it. Um, nothing else really wants to deal with it. So that's going to be very, very tough for me as well. Uh, and Mega Gyarados... Uh, well, I have to design a check for it, and that's the first thing you see on your screen, actually, is Dehuan, our Amoongus, making a return appearance, uh, coming in with a Rocky Helmet, Foul Play, Spore, Giga Drain, and Clear Smog. So, uh, a couple of things I want to note. Clear Smog, uh, very nice for Setup Sylveon, um, mainly Setup Sylveon. There's nothing else that I'm really looking at at his team uh, that Amoongus can stay in on and just f freely Clear Smog anyway. <laughs> Uh, foul play is there for the Victini switch. If he feels that it's safe, it's going to take a massive amount of damage. Uh, also there for the Mamoswine switch. Uh, both of those physical attackers do not like taking foul plays. Um, obviously, Giga Drain doing a little bit more to the Mamoswine, but it's, it's more so for a prediction turn where I think he's going either Victini or Mamoswine, kind of like debating between the two. Uh, Lando can't set up Swords Dances on me and whatnot, so uh, there is that. He doesn't like switching into uh, into foul play outside of Cobalion, so I'm going to have to be very careful about when I click this move. Uh, Spore, very, very nice for me. Uh, I do not believe I am bringing Coco this week. Uh, I would have to check my team builder. Hold on. I've got it up uh, over here. I'm uh, going to readjust that. Uh, yeah, I'm not bringing Coco this week, so Spore is pretty free uh, on the majority of his team outside of Rotom Mo. Clear Smog uh, hits that thing pretty hard, though, so uh, there is that, even though it's only a, a base 40 move, I believe. Uh, I'm going to check that real quick. Uh, is it base 40? It's base 50. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, sorry about the layout there. Every time I have to click a move, it, it irks me because it makes everything look horrible. Um, the 32 special attack investment on there is to make sure that if Danza for some reason decides to run max HP, max spidef careful Mega Gyarados, that I still have like the best chance possible to break the sub. Um, at all times, I'm breaking max HP, max spidef, but if he goes careful, then... I don't know, he's just not breaking me with that kind of Gyarados, I don't feel anyway. Uh, so, I want to be able to break a sub, uh, for sure, that's that's the big thing. Uh, sub plus Dragon Dance does limit his moves. I think that uh, the big ones against me are going to be Ice Fang plus Crunch, or Ice Fang plus Waterfall. Uh, in general, do a lot of work to my team. Uh, more so Crunch, I feel, because Meloetta and Yuxi, uh, although they can't fire back a lot of damage, they're still pains uh, to just be sitting in there against the uh, the Gyarados, especially that both can outspeed it uh, and just immediately break its sub with uh, with their coverage moves. So there's that. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, the rest of the set's pretty self-explanatory. We got the helmet on there for specifically the Mega Gyarados. That's the biggest, biggest issue. Uh, obviously, if I can ship the Victini with a, on a U-turn turn or uh, even Cobalion, Cobal uh, like a physical Cobalion, uh, getting chipped with Rocky Helmet is always really, really nice. Uh, and its spadef is not that great, so it still takes a nice chunk from Giga Drain every time, something like 15%, plus the Rocky Helmet. That's about 31%, 32%, 32%, so that's really nice for me. Uh, moving on to our next Mon on the team, we got Shia Poof. The Durant coming back this week. This time we're carrying a choice band. We're not going Z. Uh, we are going choice band on our Durant because I'm looking at Dan's team and I do not see choice band to Durant switch ins. Uh, the only real one being Cobalion uh, with the, the set that I decided to run. Uh, obviously, I could be carrying superpower, so he does have to watch out for that, but I felt like this uh, array of coverage was better for me. I've got Crunch because Crunch is a nice, uh, a nice catch on the Dust War. And the Victini, both of them. Uh, Iron Head is there to hit everything. Lando, Torn, Sylveon, Rotomo, uh, Mamoswine, uh, Gyarados, Post Mega Evolution, Kangaskhan, Ariados. None of them want to take Iron Head. Uh, X Scissor is for everything else. Uh, like, again, Rotomo and Mega Gera. Uh, Mega Gera wants its Mega Evolved. Like, he doesn't have good X Scissor switch ins in general. Uh, and I've got Aerial Ace on there because this is probably one of the best revenging options I have against Danza's team. Uh, outside of the Torn, I don't feel like Danza is going to bring Torn though. Torn is a real coin toss against me because it does amazing against my defensive core, but against my offensive mons and Coco and Arrow, it absolutely hates their existence. So it's it's really a coin toss, which is why I decided to run uh, this thing faster than Cobalion. Aerial Ace is an amazing revenging move. Uh, it does like 25 to Cobalion, so great there. Uh, Lando Eye, if it decides to be mono calm mind. Uh, for example, uh, without the rock polish, then I can come in and revenge it with Aerial Ace. It does like 30 to 40. Uh, same thing with Victini. It does a nice chunk, about 30. Uh, Sylveon takes a, a, a crap ton. So does Rotom. Like, uh, everything takes in the range of 30 to 40 percent so aerial ace is an amazing revenging move for me because there are certain situations in which i feel like i won't be able to get uh necessarily a kill on something but i feel like i can whittle them down to put them into aerial ace range so that's the idea with this moving on we got mad the choppleberry diggers b so this is a set i designed uh to be able to take um i can take cobalion's crit close combat with this set i can take a crit close combat with this spread uh, and I can fire back a superpower on the, um, not on the off chance, but rather on the, uh, the predicted set that, that I expect them to bring, which is, um, which is Air Balloon. I don't have to rely on Earthquake with this set, and Earthquake doesn't really do a lot of damage to the rest of his team outside of Victini anyway, uh, and Return does a lot too. So, uh, I decided to go max attack Adamant. I got enough speed on there for... What was it? Uh, uninvested Rotomo with a little bit of speed, as well as a very speed invested uh, Sylveon without actually being max speed, because I don't feel like he needs absolute max speed against me. Uh, so that's why I decided on that. The 16 speed F, I cannot remember for the life of me what it was for. Uh, I think it was for, um, for Z Hurricane. I believe it was to give me the best chance to live Z Hurricane from a lead torn uh, and hit back with return into quick attack and knock it out. Uh, U-turn is obviously a great... Um, it's, it's kind of a diversion move. Uh, it makes him sort of believe that I might be choiced at times. Uh, I could be choice scarfed. Uh, for example, if I get off, uh, if I come in on something slower, I U turn out. He might think that I'm scarfed. Uh, I don't reveal an item because I am Choppleberry until he hits me with a fighting move. He has no idea. Uh, Chopple also covers the uh, Lando superpower, the uh, Tornado superpower, or Focus Blast, um, and as well as like superpower from Mamoswine, for example, but I don't think he'd click that against me. Uh, focus punch from Dust Noir, I guess. Things like that, you know, drain punch from uh, from the Kang. Whatever, uh, whatever comes my way, but uh, I feel like this set can... Uh, I needed another revenging option on top of Durant, and I think Quick Attack is the best one, uh, because it, it hits extremely hard, it hits about as hard as Durant's Aerial Ace, and um, Lando, if it does get up a speed boost, I want something to be able to revenge it, so uh, that's that. Those are my revenging options, are these two. Uh, so th that gives you an idea there, and then we're going to move into uh, the big offensive threat uh, to him being uh, Mega Aerodactyl. Now, I say big offensive threat, and you look at this set, and it's like, well, you only got Pursuit and Ice Fang. Well, you look at his offense, and Lando I, Torn T, Victini, uh, even things like Rotom Mo don't want to take attacks from this thing, because uh, if, if ever his Victini is to click V-Create against my team, and it's choice locked, I knock him out with Pursuit. I'm knocking them out. 
I'm just getting rid of him immediately. <laughs> Arrow comes in, clicks pursuit, gets rid of it. Uh, I got Roost on there for uh, for obviously survivability reasons. Uh, I want to be able to take Hurricanes from Torn uh, because the rest of my team does not like taking Hurricanes, as you guys saw. We've got a Durant, we've got a, an Amoongus, and we got a Como coming up, which you guys will see. So not, none of my team likes taking the uh, the Hurricanes, except for Mega Arrow. It can definitely come in. It can, uh, can click Taunt on, uh, on a Defog, which is really nice because I, I do want to keep up my rocks. You guys are going to see, uh, actually I did something interesting this week. Um, I want to keep up my rocks and Taunt is going to help me a lot with that. It's also going to keep Mega Gyarados from subbing up or uh, going for the uh, the Dragon Dance on a turn where he knows I could live. It's kind of a last ditch move as well. Uh, and yeah, the, the rest is pretty straightforward. Obviously I can't hit Mamoswine, but Aerodactyl doesn't hit Mamoswine extremely hard anyway. Even with Stone Edge, a bulkier variant can take it easily. It's not super effective, it's just neutral. So uh, the spread, uh, the speed is for Torn. Uh, the rest I kind of poured into attack and whatever was left over, I made sure that I could take spit uh, special hits from, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Sylveon's Moonblast, actually. Uh, it might've been Sylveon's Moonblast, uh, as well as Rotom's Volt Switch and, and whatnot. I could take Rotom's Volt Switch pretty well. Uh, considering the fact that I could roost on any given turn, like if he locks, if he goes for a Leaf Storm uh, and hits my Amoongus, for example, or let's say he goes for a Leaf Storm, knocks out something, I go into Mega Aerodactyl, I'm pretty free to click uh, roost at that point because even if he goes for Leaf Storm again, it's extremely uh, weakened, so he wouldn't be able to knock me out and I can go for another roost on the following turn. I pretty much put myself in a position where I don't die to the Rotom, so uh, Rotom is, uh, is a scary, scary thing for me. Uh, it's something that I don't want to deal with, so uh, we're going to move on. The next Mon is C Major, the Como, coming this week with uh, Drain Punch, Taunt, Toxic, and Stealth Rock, so I got du dual Taunt on this team. I'm running no speed. Uh, the reason that I did this uh, was that his bottom three mons are all pretty slow and things like dust noir things like Ariados, dust noir is the being the big one really because i don't have knockoff on diggersby and i do not want my durant getting uh will-o-wisped um como can deal with uh dust noir in that sense where i can go for a taunt into an into a toxic uh, Drain Punch is really nice as I'm able to get uh, back a lot of health from the Cobalion. This is my primary Cobalion check, as you guys can see. Uh, I actually EV'd this thing to be able to take plus two uh, Phytinium uh, from close combat, so he wouldn't be able to knock me out with a uh, with a Z close combat, uh, a uh, an all out pummeling from full. Uh, I even I even might have EV'd it to be after rocks, so I can take the hit. I can Drain Punch most of the health back, and then once again I can revenge the Cobalion because he can never set up to uh, he can never set up a Swords Dance plus a um, rock polish on me unless I play really stupidly uh, and uh, stealth rocks are there for obvious reasons. Yachi Berry is really cool because a lot of the ways that his, de his team deals with my team is by running ice coverage. Things like Icy Wind on Torn, uh, the um, Hidden Power Ice on uh, on Lando, for example. Uh, Mamoswine's Icicle Crash. Uh, now, this is really cool. In a lead situation against uh, Mamoswine, I'm pretty much free to click Drain Punch. So long as he doesn't flinch me, I'm able to to really weaken the Mamoswine and then go into a respective uh, a respectable check afterwards, which you guys are about to see uh, the turn after. So I, th I think this thing really deals with his defensive core, while the rest of my team dealt with the, sort of the top half. This really deals with the bottom half. It prevents Mega Gera from going for repeated uh, Dragon Dances if this is what's in. Uh, if he wants to sub up on me to prevent the, the Toxic, then he has to deal with the Drain Punch. He's forced to first turn Mega, so he becomes uh, a Dark type as a result, and I'm able to break his sub because I am Max Attack Adamant. So, uh, very, very, very nice set. Uh, moving on, uh, last one on the team, we do have Knowledge, the Uxie, Colberberry, Ice Punch, U Turn, Foul Play, Stealth Rocks. Now, you guys saw I'm running dual Stealth Rocks. And the reason being that Victini is a threat, Torn is a threat, Lando is a threat, and Gera is a threat. All of those are major threats, and I know that Danza, I've been watching some of his videos, and I know that he's been very fixated on bringing a Defogmon every single week because he fell short to hazards. Uh, I think it was either once or twice, and uh, he, he absolutely wants to bring Defog on Torn, on Lando, uh, on Rotom, on something uh, to be able to get rid of hazards. So if I give him the impression that I sacked off one of my, my, my main rocker, uh, at some point in the game, I can still get up rocks later. If he lets his defogger go down and I get up rocks afterwards, then Arrow's looking really nice. <clears throat> Durant's looking really really nice for the end game. Got Ice Punch on there. Uh, like I said, his top uh, two are pretty ice weak. Uh, ice Punch hits them pretty hard. Uh, 
Foul play is there mainly for the Mammoth Swine because I need something to hit it. Uh, and I wasn't going to rely on something like Focus Punch. I can't even remember if he gets Focus Punch. Uh, U-Turn is there because uh, I'm actually faster than the Gyarados. If you look at my speed, I hit 288, uh, which is faster than Mega Gyarra. If it Mega Evolves on me and goes for a sub, I get off a U-Turn and I get into Juan. Uh, and this has Rocky Helmet plus Giga Drain, so it can wear down the, the Mega Gyarra and essentially get rid of it. That's going to be the idea. Uh, I had that situation play out in a lot of mocks. Mega Gyarra really likes to come in on Uxie because there isn't much that Uxie can do to it. But getting off the fast U-Turn into uh, my defensive check is really, really, really good for me. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's not too much you can do to this. Uh, the Culver Berry is mainly for knockoff from Lando, knockoff from uh, Torn, uh, as well as potential knockoff from the Mamoswine. And if I need to take a hit from a plus one Gyarra uh, with Crunch, I can take it. So, very straightforward team. There's, like, it's, it's, it looks complex, but it really isn't. Uh, there's a lot of really straightforward sets, so. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop right into the game as we are on the wrong screen, aren't we? Uh, yes we are. Hold on. Uh, that was my Amoongus set. Where is my replay? It should be right here. And there we go. Alright, so, this is the matchup. Um, I forgot to reverse it, so um, I'm going to do that right now as we're going to switch sides and I'm going to pause and reset. Okay, so, uh, I, you guys already saw Danza's lead, you guys don't know mine. So, you guys see, uh, he brought a lot of the stuff that I expected. Uh, Dust Noir is kind of dealt with by Como. Uh, we've got the uh, Mem Swine. I see no Cobalion, and I was actually really surprised. Uh, but what surprised me even more was seeing no Torn. <laughs> seeing none, neither of those two was a, a shocker. I was like, wait, what? Uh, where, where are the two biggest offensive threats to my team? Um, one by just spamming attacks and the other one by setting up. What, what, what's going on? Uh, and uh, I pretty much calculated, I, I pretty much figure out that it either, either has to be Lando or the Mamo, which is his rocker, which Yuxi can deal with pretty much both uh, simultaneously, which is really nice because I don't have to deal with a rocking Cobalion. And uh, I see the Dust Noir, like I said, Como deals with that. See the Sylveon, I'm kind of expecting a choice set uh, against my team. I know that uh, he could be carrying Psyshock for my Amoongus, so there is that. And uh, we got the Victini, I need to scout that thing set. And the Gera, I really don't care about, I got Amoongus. So uh, we're going to hop right into this game. He's going to lead off with Sylveon, I'm going to lead off with Yuxi. So my um, idea here was no matter what he chose to lead off with, uh, it was pretty f uh, safe to just get up rocks. Uh, he could he couldn't taunt me with anything but the uh, the Lando. I believe it doesn't even get taunt. Uh, I might be wrong, uh, but the Gara can't taunt me because I'm faster. So uh, I would get up my rocks immediately, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. As Danza decides to baton pass, and he gets out into his Lando, and this is what I was talking about. I think Danza has developed an obsession with defogging, uh, so much so that he goes into his Lando. He lets it take an ice punch as he defogs away my rocks, and uh, you already know I am not getting out of here without rocks. He's going to go for U-turn. I don't care. I take 30. Uh, uh, he's going to take a Life Orb hit, and I'm going to get back up my rocks as he brings in his Victini. Now, uh, I'm going to let him U-turn again. If he, Like I mentioned earlier, if he goes for the V-Create, he's dead. He's gone. It's over. Uh, no more Victini to worry about. And Yuxi is really only here to set up rocks and deal with Alano, and it already did both things. So I really don't need this thing anymore. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for my own U-turn on this turn. And I am going to get in uh, Durant right here. And uh, Durant has no switch-ins. As you can see, Gera is going to come in. It's going to get off an Intimidate. And it's still going to take 36% from a resisted hit. Now, this thing is ridiculously strong. I, I can't say it enough. I'm so glad that I drafted Durant. It's so, so strong. Anyway, I'm, I got to get out of here. I can't risk him running Flamethrower like he did in the GBA. Or Fire Blast, rather. Uh, I got to get out of here. I'm going to go into my uh, into my Amoongus, which I know can take even a Fire Blast. So I'll deal with uh, whatever set he is. He's going to go into his um, into his Dust Noir. He's going to first my Rocky Helmet. So at this point, he should know that this is the check to his, uh, his Gyarados. He should have known that from the moment I switched in. But anyway, um, at this point, I'm going to let my Amoongus get burned. I don't really care because I don't need Foul Play. In this game, I'm looking at, at the matchup, and I'm like, I don't need foul play. I can risk this thing getting burned. And I'm just going to go for a spore. I'm going to put his Dust Noir to sleep. And uh, then I'm going to start firing off, I believe, Giga Drains at this point. As that is exactly what I do. I'm just going to go for uh, for some Giga Drains right here. As uh, I know that he's probably carrying Pain Split. That's what I had going through my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to necessarily let him Pain Split on me. Uh, this is a very interesting turn. As you guys see, I went for Spore there expecting the Wake Up. That way I could keep him asleep even if he did go for Pain Split and then I could get a free switch out into something else and just get my Regenerator health back. Um, but this actually ends up playing to my favor because I go for the Spore, 
uh, and I change up my move on the following turn, and I end up going for the uh, Giga Drain, because if I Spore as he switches out, I don't gain anything, and that's a, a, a reasonable option for him. So instead, I'm just going to go for Giga Drain. I know that I can switch into Como at any time on this thing, and I'm not worried about Como getting burned, uh, regardless of the Mammoth Swine being there. Like I said, I have an amazing Revenge Killer in Durant with Aerial Ace, so I really don't care. I'm just going to go for Giga Drain, and he brings in the Defogging Lando, so... Hurrah, our rocks are here to stay, ladies and gentlemen. That means that the Gyarados, which is uh, presently at something like 38%, falls to uh, 13, which means that it can't sub, because uh, he never Mega Evolved, he switched out immediately, I believe. Uh, yeah, he did, because it's still in regular on the screen. Uh, Victini takes 25% every time it comes in. Uh, Sylveon takes 12, so does Mamo, and the, uh, the Dust Noir is still asleep right now, so uh, that thing's not a bother. Uh, he's actually going to go back into his uh, his Dust Noir right now. He's going to first put my Rocky Helmet again. No no big deal. He's going to go for the Pain Split. I expected that. I do expect him to wake up this turn, and I'm going to go for Spore. Uh, the reason I went for Spore that time was because if he pulled a Switch out, uh, like a double, then he just took needless rock damage on his Dust Noir for nothing, so I figured that he would stay in. Uh, so I end up firing off a Spore. I keep this thing asleep. Uh, no biggie. He's going to switch out. He's going to go into his Sylveon as I pull a Switch out into my Arrow. Now, I know that even if this thing is Scarfed, I outspeed it. Uh, I crept the, uh, the torn, so I'm good there. I know that he's probably not going to want to keep in his Sylveon. Uh, what I end up doing here is I actually dump a double uh, into Amoongus, and I get it back in, and he's going to go into his Victini now. Uh, I disagree with this play. I don't feel like he should have gone Victini here, even though it's expendable, expendable because the second it goes for any attack, my uh, arrow comes in and revenges it. I still think that he should have gone Mamo because that puts a lot more offensive pressure on me. Uh, and while it does allow back in Durant at some point, if he is choice scarfed, uh, it's not as easy for Durant to come in. And flinches are always a thing, so I've, I've got to be more careful around the Mamo than I do around the Victini. The Victini, I have the safest switch in the world, which is sacking my U. Uh, to his Zen Headbutt, and I actually see this damage. It does 16.7%, and I calc it, and I'm like, oh, this is this is Choice Band. This is Choice Band Victini. Okay, so I can kind of play around this. I can go into my Durant, keep my Uxie for Sack Fodder later, and I'm going to end up taking 32% from that Zen Headbutt, which means it's probably not a 2 hit KO from here, uh, but I know that I'm faster. That's, that's something that I, I'm 100% guaranteed. Uh, to be is faster than his Victini. So I contemplated what move to click here. I could very easily click Crunch and just knock this thing out, or his Gera, or his Dust Noir, or uh, to hit KO his Mamo, or get a huge chunk off on his Sylveon, which is already pretty low. Uh, but I instead decide to go for the Iron Head because I felt like uh, if I missed Crunch on the Mamo, I was forced out, whereas if I missed cr uh, Iron Head on the Mamo, I still had the option of staying in. So I'm going to end up going for the uh, the Iron Head. I know he's probably not going to stay in, and I know that my Iron Head 2 KO's uh, Victini as well. I end up getting a crit on his uh, Dust Noir. Now, that only matters if uh, I miss the next Iron Head. So realistically, um, it would have ended up being hacks one way or another, uh, but the Dust Noir would have ended up dead, uh, and that would have been fine by me. And I had ways of dealing with the Dust Noir. Uh, another mon that really deals well with Dust Noir, actually, this game, is uh, Arrow. Because Arrow can spam Taunt and Pursuit. And end up beating the... Uh, and end up beating the Dust Noir 1v1 because I have Roost, I have Taunt, and I have Pursuit. So I would eventually knock him all the way down, not allow him to Pain Split on me. So I get another kill with, uh, with the Iron Head. He's going to go into his Mammoth Swine. I'm going to uh, actually stay in here. Uh, as he reveals the Choice Scarf, uh, being faster than me, and he didn't go for Earthquake, I assume because he was afraid of uh, Yuxi coming in and being sacked, so he's gonna end up going for the knockoff. He knows that Icicle Crash would do nothing to me. Um, as good as Durant is in the endgame, I can win with Diggersby now, pretty readily. Uh, if he doesn't lock into an Ice move, then Diggersby comes in anyway, and it can, it can pretty much kill something. Uh, and I still do have the Komo with the Yachi Berry for his Mammoth Swine. And the fact that his Mammoth Swine now revealed Scarf means that I don't have to worry about Life Orb crit. I don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm going to go for an Iron Head. I'm going to hit another one, which is crazy. I think I've hit three at this point. Uh, unheard of. And uh, the Mammoth Swine is going to end up going down. And in comes his Victini. I know that I'm faster than this thing. Uh, but he reveals the Quick Attack. I go for a Crunch. I don't have my... Uh, I don't have my choice band anymore because he knocked it off. So I gotta go, I'm gonna go for the crunch. He ends up doing 10% to me with quick attack, and I end up living, I think, on 2 HP. Uh, and now he's gonna bring in his Sylveon. I'm gonna go for an Iron Head, but he has another quick attack in the back. Quick attack Sylveon. That's uh, that's a set. 
Um, that was actually a pretty good bring for my Como, uh, considering that I could have been DD. Uh, would have been really nice to, to be able to revenge my Como at 50, uh, roughly between 40 and 50, uh, with his uh, Sylveon. That was uh, that was a cool bring. Uh, but what this is gonna do is gonna it's gonna allow in my Diggersby. He's gonna go for another quick attack. I'm just gonna knock this thing out with return. And uh, when his Garrett comes in, I'm gonna play it safe um, because. If uh, he Mega Evolves, which he has to, uh, Quick Attack is not a guaranteed kill, whereas uh, Rocky Helmet is always a guaranteed kill right now. Uh, he's at 15%, so I'm going to end up switching out into my Amoongus. He's going to go for the Dragon Dance. That doesn't bother me at all. He needs to flinch me repeatedly with Ice Fang, which he is not permitted to do uh, as he hits my Rocky Helmet and he Im immediately dies to, to it. And uh, he ends up critting me too, and I calced for the crit, and I saw that it couldn't kill me, so I was like, yeah, you know what? We're just going to stay in, and we're going to click Giga Drain, so that that ends up being a, uh, a 5-0 win for us. Um, I was really happy with uh, the way this game played out, uh, with everything. Uh, I don't think anything realistically went like too heavily in my favor. Uh, he crit knockoff with his uh, with his Mamoswine on my Durant when it could have just clean swept the rest of the game. Uh, like two, a quick attack into quick attack wouldn't have ended up knocking it out. Like he could have played games with his uh, with his Gera with Intimidate, but he only had that option once because it came in on rocks only once. Uh, well, I guess if he Mega Evolves, but then he has to think about attacking or not, because then he dies to my Amoongus. So, uh, either way, I think it would have ended up being a 5-0. Uh, the crit on the Dust Noir, I, again, I don't consider hacks unless I miss the next Iron Head. Uh, and even that, I still had the option to switch into something like Uxie, uh, which was at really, a really, really low amount of health. And uh, Pain Split would have gotten him absolutely nothing back. Uh, maybe like 10% roughly, so uh, that was always an option. So th th I, I probably wouldn't have ended up staying in with Durant just for the fear of missing, uh, and I would have gone Uxie, but I had to keep that sack. And uh, yeah, this game played out really, really well. Uh, I, uh, this is the first time I really felt confident about how I was playing a game, and it, it came through all the all the plays, uh, everything. And 5-0 uh, win. Uh, second in a row now actually uh last week's was a little bit more haxy i feel like this one i was in complete control the entire game so good game to danza um i hope that we get a chance to face off again i hope uh, his uh, his season turns around he's been on a little bit of a losing streak i believe at this point so uh definitely go and show him some love guys go and uh, check out his channel in the description down below uh next week we've got uh the person who i've never beat in draft league format before, uh, who we played twice in minors uh, in our uh, first season in minors, which is uh, Poke Rob, uh, no, not Poke Rob, excuse me, Poke TCG Gamer Rob. Um, I, I may have made that mistake before in the past calling him Poke Rob. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. Uh, yeah, we got Poke TCG Gamer, who's a ladder champion. He's um, uh, by the time you guys are watching this, he's uh, he's already won SPL. Uh, with his team. Uh, I forget the team name, but uh, his team won SPL, which is uh, really cool. Uh, he's a big part of it as well. He he did pull through for his team, uh, get some crucial wins. So this, this guy's incredible. He's a really good builder, really good player. Uh, I'm not looking forward to playing against him, uh, but I've actually got some uh, pretty big transactions coming up uh, this, this next week. Uh, my team actually changed a little bit. You guys probably noticed it in the team builder, uh, but uh, I did have... Actually, I didn't update it on here. Um, I'm supposed <laughs> on this team. I'm supposed to have Samurott and um, Samurott and Ditto instead of Fortress. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. My team was actually incorrect. Uh, I, me I meant to mention something about the uh, the Ditto as well uh, in team prep. Uh, the fact that he couldn't bring like an enormous amount of setup against me this game because of the, the presence of Ditto. But anyway, um, that's not important. We made those transactions over the uh, over the last week, and we've got a couple more coming up this week. So I'm gonna try to make a video about it as well because I think these two are a little bit more crucial than the Ditto and Samurott pickup. Uh, while I love Samurott and they gave me a water type, uh, I think that this next transaction puts my team. Uh, somewhere where it hasn't been yet this season, that's, uh, like, scary status. So, you guys are gonna see, uh, what those transactions are. Be looking out for that. Uh, that video should be coming out some point. I, I would say, like, Monday or Tuesday. Probably Tuesday, though, because I'm off on Tuesday, so. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, as usual, make sure to leave a like down below. Uh, I know this is a little bit longer of a video, but I did feel really proud of, about this win, so I wanted to go into detail on everything and, uh, and how I prepped, how I played. So uh, if you guys agree, uh, make sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking of our season. We are now 5-1 plus 15 differential, which is incredible. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time here, or if you're just passing by from time to time. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single battle from the NPL Season 8. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.